Hong Kong. This upscale residential district boasts a Japanese supermarket. Inside, shoppers crowd the vegetable aisle. And the focus of all this attention is these sweet potatoes. One after another, customers add them to their carts. A glance at the label shows these sweet potatoes are from Japan's Miyazaki Prefecture. There are also samples of steamed sweet potato on offer. The customer's verdict? Simply steaming these potatoes is enough to bring out their natural sweetness. And that sugary goodness is why Japanese sweet potatoes are sold in Hong Kong as fruit rather than vegetables. Here's one regular buyer. Actually, in this store alone sells up to five tons of these Japanese sweet potatoes a week. The man behind this craze is Makoto Ikeda. CEO of a unique agricultural venture. His brand's popularity across Asia is bringing rapid growth. In only the firm's fourth year of exports, sales are up to 700 million yen, a sevenfold increase year on year. Today on Rising, we follow a business promoting Japanese sweet potatoes on the global stage. The city of Kushima in Miyazaki Prefecture, Western Japan, is known for its sweet potatoes. And the headquarters of Makoto Ikeda's firm is painted a striking red that evokes this local favorite. The company handles five varieties of sweet potato, processing up to 3,600 tons of produce per year. It is also working on new cultivars that are even sweeter and more succulent. Even during their break, the staff enjoy snacking on local sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> From growing and harvesting to washing, then sorting, grading, and shipping. Ikeda's entire operation is dedicated to sweet potatoes. Besides taste and texture, there is a particular trait for which this firm selects. We specialize in smaller specimens like these. They do come even smaller, but this size is our specialty. The firm's exports to Asia are mainly in the 100 gram range. That's just a quarter the size of the average sweet potato sold in Japan. 
The firm's biggest export market is Hong Kong, recipient of 285 tons per year. And the focus on small potatoes is shaped by the unique housing conditions in this market. Hong Kong's population density means that individual homes are often very small. The Han family lives in a government-owned apartment complex. Even in this middle-class home, the kitchen is barely big enough to accommodate a washing machine and refrigerator. And with little space to store ingredients, vegetables that can be cooked quickly and consumed in one meal are preferred. To Mrs. Han, the small size is part of the appeal of these sweet potatoes, which she cooks two or three times a month. These potatoes are even small enough to fit into a rice cooker hole for a sweet treat at the push of a button. Ready in just 20 minutes, this snack is a favourite of the Han family. At the market, too, smaller sweet potatoes seem to be the norm. This is how things are throughout Hong Kong. In order to capitalize on this demand, back in Miyazaki Prefecture, Makoto Ikeda's firm actively buys up smaller sweet potatoes from nearby producers. Taijiro Andaku farms sweet potatoes in a neighboring prefecture. Last year, he switched from selling through the local agricultural cooperative to supplying Ikeda's company. Because there was no demand, we used to just leave small potatoes in the fields. But these guys will export specimens of 50 grams or less. Take them off our hands. It's made a big difference to our business. Nowadays, we hardly discard any produce at all. Ikeda's company pays by weight, regardless of individual potatoes' size, giving farmers an income from produce that they used to discard. No waiting around for results. It's great. You know right away just how much you're getting. We buy by weight per lot. It can be very frustrating for farmers when buyers only accept potatoes between particular weights. To ensure a steady supply of small, sweet potatoes, Ikeda has also turned his attention to his firm's own fields. One strategy used in this plot is planting seedlings closer together. Competition between neighboring plants limits tuber growth, increasing the proportion of smaller sized potatoes. Over the next five years, Ikeda hopes to triple the annual quantity sourced from contracted growers and his company's own fields. He may be the CEO, but Ikeda also helps with more hands-on tasks whenever he has time. Which does he prefer? I like both. But since I love sweet potatoes, 
I like to get my hands on them. It's good to feel like part of the team. He too was once a sweet potato grower, running a four-person farm with his family. But in 2010, at the age of 40, he set up his own company. The move came after learning that the local co-op was exporting his produce to Asia to sell at a higher price. A little research revealed there were five intermediaries between farmer and retailer. Though Ikeda received only 60 yen per sweet potato, once everybody had taken their cut, in Hong Kong they sold for up to 700 yen each. I was flabbergasted. I felt deceived. I was sure there must be a different path to market. So I called up an export firm and proposed a partnership. Cutting out the middleman would boost producers' earnings and lower prices for consumers. Ikeda cut a deal with an exporter. But... Three months in, they suddenly cancelled the deal. I knew it was due to outside pressure, and I told the bigwigs in local government and the co-op that they wouldn't get away with it. Ikeda decided to go fully independent. In the beginning, it was just he, his wife and children operating from this small barn. Wife Yukari remembers those early days. His mother and I were against the plan at first. Early sales via the food hall of a small local department store were poor, and we couldn't figure out why. It took dedicated sales work to forge their own path to market, but in 2013, they were ready to start exporting again. And the combination of small size, sweet flavor, and affordable prices has made their sweet potatoes a hit across Asia. As well as Hong Kong, the business has grown to Taiwan, Thailand, Malaysia, and beyond. And their exports of 515 tons per year, 22% of the Japanese total, are now worth over 150 million yen. 2017 saw Japan host its first food export fair. 300 firms from across the food industry exhibited their offerings. And Ikeda's sweet potatoes were there among Japan's hottest food exports. <laughs> he was even invited to give a talk on his export success story. I may be the CEO, but really I'm just a flashy old guy. We don't try to make farming seem like something it isn't. But we do want to represent our area through farming with a contemporary twist. One day I hope to be known as the king of sweet potatoes, head of a company that, like many well-known fruit and vegetable brands, has built its name predominantly on one product. In 2016, Ikeda's work promoting Japanese exports even earned him an award from the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. In 2017, he began work on a 900 million yen sweet potato sorting facility. What was the motivation for such a move? Come on, get As you can see, these potatoes are beginning to spoil. 
Sweet potatoes can be prone to issues such as bruising and necrosis. And when overlooked, deterioration and pitting beneath the skin can bring complaints from customers. In order to prevent this, the new sorting facility employs a state-of-the-art optical sensor. It gauges the internal condition of produce based on permeability to light. This enables defective items to be detected and discarded. Cutting into a potato flagged up by the system confirms the digital assessment. The machine correctly identified this damaged item. The new system helps to ensure customer satisfaction. The plant also installed Japan's first spectrometer for sugar content detection. Results here indicate the likely sweetness of these potatoes when cooked. A baked sweet potato typically has a sugar content of 35 to 40 degrees bricks. This sensor enables produce to be sorted by sugar content. By eliminating variation, Ikeda can guarantee a consistently sweet end product to match the tastes of consumers throughout Asia. These investments in high-tech equipment were spearheaded by young employee Junpei Shimoide. With no prior experience in farming, he joined the company straight out of engineering school in 2013, and that expertise was vital when it came to planning this sorting plant. This is the first facility of its kind, with all these sensors, all aimed at sweet potatoes. Without any precedents to study, the design took around 18 months in total. I even had to scrap one plan and start again when I realized I was on the wrong track. Active recruitment of young specialists in farming and other fields helps the firm stay ahead of competitors when it comes to quality. On its own, branding just isn't enough. We have to back it up with higher quality for a product consumers can trust. I think we finally have the foundation to achieve that now. Roughly twice a year, Ikeda surveys consumer preferences at supermarkets in overseas markets. Today, he's in Hong Kong to run taste tests of sweet potato varieties popular in Japan. The silk sweet breed is particularly sweet and smooth. This one's ripe. See how soft it is? One bite is enough to convince most customers. And the bags of produce fly off the stand. The trial seems like a success. The packaging represents another of Ikeda's innovations. Note the lack of condensation. It's almost unheard of. Sweet potatoes are typically shipped by boat in climate-controlled conditions. Sudden changes in temperature upon unloading usually result in condensation. As a result, over 30% of produce sent out is ultimately discarded. 
We used to lose a lot of stock to mold, but now we've solved that problem. These bags use a new material developed in conjunction with a packaging manufacturer. The material absorbs moisture like a sponge, keeping the contents safe from damage. Though this packaging costs five times more than standard, Ikeda himself insisted on its use. And as a result, loss of stock to mold has decreased by two thirds. Ikeda's Miyazaki sweet potatoes sell in Hong Kong for around 20 Hong Kong dollars, more than $10 less than exports of the same variety from elsewhere in Japan. This local supermarket is hoping to stock even more of Ikeda's produce. After we search and after we selling the street potato from Japan, we find the Miyazaki the, even in, the, in terms of taste and also the texture is most fit for our Hong Kong customers. So it is very welcomed by our customers. So we target to main push more for the Miyazaki street potatoes. As a producer, it's no good to think you can sell at a high price just because your sweet potatoes are from Japan, grow in bulk and presume you can sell it all. We've had to build a network in Hong Kong and other markets. And while honoring and appreciating those connections, our role is to deliver what our partners need. And I want to keep on improving in that regard. Back in Japan, Ikeda heads out to inspect his company's fields. Agriculture in Japan faces a severe aging crisis. Among farmers, the average age is over 66 years old. Ikeda sees reviving farming in Miyazaki as another important duty. So much land is left to lie fallow. If our company doesn't step up to farm it, no one will. Left like that, some fields soon go wild, but that land is the only asset these farmers have. As our company grows, we hope to rent as much of that land as possible and farm it ourselves. Oi. Oi. <laughs> To address this issue, Ikeda set up a production division that actively recruits younger workers. It's peak harvest season, and the team is working at full throttle. First, the plants are cut from the store car. Then, the plastic sheets that protect the soil from weeds are removed. And finally, the sweet potatoes are dug up by a harvester, while the crew hand sorts each item by size. It's hard physical labor. Among the team with an eye-catching hairstyle is Ryota Kawano, an employee since May 2017. With no previous experience of farming, he's had six months of learning on the job. I enjoy the variety of the work, lots of digging and planting. The production team is led by Haruki Kiyomoto. After years farming sweet potatoes with his family, he was recruited in 2016 to train Ikeda's growing workforce. 
and careful division of labor among the team means that he now has much more free time than he did as an independent farmer. On a family farm, hourly wages aren't an issue. You work from morning till night because, as a family, that's the only way to get all the work done. The average age of Ikeda's team currently stands at 33, around half the age of the average Japanese farmer. If working for a commercial farming firm means low wages and little time off, then people are going to choose other jobs. But our company wants to compete on equal terms. I hope to keep this up for another 10, 20, even 100 years. Ikeda's approach has attracted numerous young workers and their energy will power the pursuit of even bigger things for Japanese sweet potatoes. I'm not from here, but I want to call Kushima my home, and that's why I take such pride in the work we do to revitalize this region. I basically wasted my 20s. I was rebellious and butted heads with the adults in my life. I was even worse than the venerable Ikeda-san. <laughs> venerable? I'm not that old. I want you to keep the spirit of this company alive, even when I'm too old to stand with you. It's your hard work that makes this company what it is. Let's keep that up together. Thank you. It's fun to watch things develop. And that's what being an entrepreneur, starting your own business, is all about. It makes me glad I chose this path. It gives my life meaning. Here in Miyazaki, a new generation is picking up the reins for a new kind of farming. And this Japanese sweet potato firm with global ambitions is sowing the seeds of that future. <laughs>